So our first topic is uh, kinematics. That's this week. Kinematics. Kinematics. It's actually, you're going to think, oh, kinematics. Actually, here's a quick question before we get started. And I'm not judging you. I will not uh, adjust my lectures to only teach the people who already know physics. That's usually what's wrong with the class. How many people took some kind of physics in high school? A lot of you. If you're not ahead, it's okay. I'm mostly thinking about the jokes. Okay, most of you have taken physics in high school. Okay, so kinematics, then you may know, is really just boring things about throwing stuff and seeing it move and describing that. Kind of boring, but it also describes like how planets move, how asteroids move, how basically anything moves. It even describes how coupled objects move, like my arm, my forearm, and this arm. So it's robotics, your generation, the whole robot camp thing. So that gets you excited, right? So kinematics is important to robotics, but also how the human body moves, right? So how many in here are majoring in kinesiology? A lot of you, right? So the very first thing we talk about in physics is directly relevant to why you're here. So there you go. Kinesiology is just about how the body moves. Now, we're just going to describe boring things like chalk dropping. I'm sorry. Okay, because you got to start somewhere. So I often like to have sort of simple definitions of things. So uh, kinematics, I'm going to say, is describing motion with graphs and equations. Okay, these are not technical definitions. It's just basically uh, the idea of what it is, or what kinematics is. Um, so we're going to do that uh, with examples of graphs and equations. Our first example of kinematics, we're going to describe the kinematics of a motionless body. All right, that's the simplest thing we can possibly describe with kinematics. Okay. The best demo of a motionless body is me on a dance floor. I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do with my arms, right? Uh, but instead, that would be a little weird. So we're going to go with this. This is a steel ball that I call Hal. And uh, Hal can move on a one-dimensional track like this, right? Back and forth. And we just got to put Hal somewhere and make it sit still. And that's it, okay? So when you consider a problem like this or any problem, the most important thing to do is to draw it. By the end of the semester, your drawing skills are going to increase because you just got to draw stuff. It helps. It's like while you're thinking about it, just draw it. So let's draw how on the track here. Got the track. The track doesn't move, so we need these hatch marks. Is it hatch marks or hash marks? That tells me that's a solid track. That's not moving, right? And then how is going to sit here like this. But that might be a zero, right? So we put a little like reflection triangle on how. There you go. So how sitting on a track. But the thing we need to do this mathematically is an axis. We're doing it with math, so we say, okay, somewhere on this track, he's along the x-axis. And we'll say the origin is over here. Right? And, you know, a real axis is probably going to have units on it, so 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters. This is the x-position in centimeters. Well, that's something like that. I forgot my ruler. Let me get it. All right, you've probably seen a meter stick before. Have you ever seen a two meter stick? You probably have. Ooh, wow. It must be a top 20 school. I have a two meter stick. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to describe little graphs and equations. Let's do graphs first, and I need a lab partner. Who has the guts? All you got to do is stand right here and be my lab. It's not hard. You won't even come back here. So somebody get down there, I need somebody standing right there. It'll be easy. While I draw this graph, some brave soul is going to stand right there. Let me start drawing this. Yes. Excellent. Okay, you're going to stand there. What's your name? Shams. Shams. And what college? Hanson. Hanson. Oh, Hanson. hello, Hanson. Hanson, the only place on campus where you have to wipe your feet to go outside. But uh, anyway. <laughs> let's draw this here. Um, Okay, so we're going to draw the graph, and uh, in kinematics, the x-axis is always time, okay? The y-axis is always whatever it is you're considering. In this case, me and Sam are going to do position, right? So this is plus x, and this is the origin, and there's time, okay? So how this problem is, is I'm going to say the time, and you're going to tell me where it is. So have a look at the position. At time equals zero, we'll say is now. Where is it? 110. Right there. Okay, now we're going to wait five seconds. 
Where is it now? One second. Nice. Five seconds later. Three. Okay, where is it now? One second. You do not mess with me. Okay, it's at one second. And five seconds later, at t equals 15, I'll be with drama. Now. One second. One second. Okay. Look at that. That's a kinematic graph. Now we're going to fit a line to it. Like that. Look at that. R squared equals 1. Should we high five? No, it's too soon. It's too soon. So. <laughs> Let's hear it for Shams. Very nice. Excellent lab partner. I can't believe Hanson was first. It was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Um, let's see, so this is our kinematics plot. So a kinematics graph, all it is is like the story of the motion, right? And this is the simplest one. It's just this thing basically sitting still. So if you have the line is flat on what we'll call a position time graph, that's a motionless body, all right? Um, now we'll go with equations. Let's see. All right, so the equation for this motion is simply x equals 110 centimeters. Pretty boring equation. Right? But we started with the easiest possible case of kinematics. Right? But it's possible to get mixed up even in this. It's, you could even screw this up. Right? So let me tell you the two things that are confusing even at this early stage here. Um, one is what you call the axes. So if you take a math class, you learn this is x and this is y. You're often describing space. Maybe x is always horizontal in space. y might be positioned in the y-axis, or it might be y as a function of x. Maybe it's f and it, it's x. But if you're obsessed with your high school math class, you think of this as x, OK? You always put x on the horizontal. In physics, we put anything on any axis we want, all right? We don't care, OK? So in kinematics, when we're doing kinematics problems, we always put time on the horizontal. Time will always be here. This will always be position. Or as we move forward, maybe velocity, or maybe acceleration, or maybe jerk, or maybe the derivative of jerk, or whatever comes after acceleration, OK? This will always be time, only in kinematics. Soon we'll be doing something else. But this week, this one is always time. And you might even hear me revert to my youth and accidentally say, OK, put uh, x on the y-axis. Right? Because I still think of this as y and this is x, because it's ingrained into us when we're little kids, and you can't get over it. Okay, if I say put x on the y-axis, I just mean put x on the, the vertical axis. So don't mix up your axes names. Um, and the other confusing thing is, oh yeah, so this. What is this? This is x as a function of time. X parentheses t is how you might see it in a math class. In physics, we don't write the parentheses t, because it looks like x times time. It's all confusing. Okay? So how do you know it's x as a function of time? Oh, this is the hard part of doing physics problems. Context is how you know. You have to look at a problem and get things from context, not that you're always going to be told. That seems really hard, right? What context tells us that this is a function of time? We're doing kinematics. That's your context. Here's your context right here. We're doing kinematics. We study things that are a function of time. So you won't always be explicitly told everything about a problem. I'll show you another example in a minute. Um, that equals that. And usually this will be have some function of time with the uh, dependent variable in it, something times time. But for now, since we have this boring case of motionless body, it's just a constant. Okay. So be prepared to look for context. All right. Um, let's look. So I don't, I'm out of my zone here. Let's see. Twenty-five. 35 minutes is 10, okay. Okay, so now let's look, uh, let's actually uh, think about what would happen if it actually moved, right? If we're going to actually let Hal move from one position to another, here to here, or here to here, we can't just think about one position, we have to think about two positions. So that's displacement. Is a difference between two positions. Right, displacement. So if I take Hal and I put him here at, say, 40 centimeters, and he was at 40, and I move him to 60, like that, right? an arrow tells you where he started and where he landed, then his displacement, we call it a delta x. x is the position. This, it's x final position minus x initial position. Changes are always final minus initial. Always final minus initial. So 60 minus 40 is 20 centimeters is a displacement. That's all displacement is. Okay? It's just the change. We could go backwards, and you could guess what's going to happen if I went from uh, 
55, how was it 55? And he made it down to 40, like that, like that. All right, the displacement would be delta x equals uh, 40 minus 55 would be minus 115 centimeters. The displacement would be negative because it's going the other way. Right? So it may, may feel like a vector. Well, we don't worry about vectors in 1D. In 1D, this week is only 1D kinematics, then positive means the, this way and negative means that way. Or you could switch it if you want. So we're not doing vector notation yet, but we are keeping up with the sign on the displacement. Okay. Now here's an example of something we're kind of skipping over is uh, distance. So in your uh, high school physics class, I may say, okay, that's displacement. But now let's think about this. What if we started at 40, and instead of going straight to 60, we went up and out and all around and passed it around. Here's how. Pass it down. It's very heavy. Oh, my God. Pass it down. I give it back to me. Right? And we go to 60. What is the displacement? 20. Oh, did I start at 60? I'm sorry, no. <laughs> we started at 40, we went, all around, we went to 60. The displacement is still 20. Okay, so displacement doesn't care about the path. Okay, displacement does not care about path. The actual distance you traveled is important in some kinds of problems. We're actually going to skip over that. We just want to focus on displacement because that's how we get to the calculus. Okay? All right. 